Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Alter tops are requests I don't always get to fill, but I had a cute one in mind, so here we are. I tried something different and gave this one thicker straps that weren't too big, but are perfect for wearing with a bra. And this design is fully customizable, so you could pick a cropped if you want, but that's up to you. Something else that's up to you is subscribe to this channel, which I'd be happy if you did. It means you'll know when there's a new upload on the channel, and if you want to be first in line, consider clicking the bell, because that lets you know as soon as one goes live, whichever works for you. Oh, and before I go, be sure to click like as well. It helps the video do well against the algorithm, which means more awesome tutorials like this one in the future. Now with that out of the way, it's time to go on with the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category for yarn will work, but I use a total of 280 grams of yarn, and that's 320 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any 999 plus order, and enter this week's padding away by telling us your go-to dance move. I'm not much of a dancer anymore, but can always get down with the two-step. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using five stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. Double crochet. and treble crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we down to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first gonna grab our category four yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're gonna grab our five millimeter hook and we're all gonna start by making a chain that reaches from our underarm right to underneath the girls. So I'm gonna start off by making a chain of four and a half or 12 centimeters, and that's gonna be a chain of 18. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain, and then we're going to do a chain one. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. Then from here, we're gonna insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook. So insert, yarn over, and we're going to pull through everything with a slip stitch. So we're gonna pull through one, and pull through two. Let's do the next one. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do this one more time. Into that next chain, insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. And a really quick tip is once when you're done with your slip stitch, don't pull on your work yarn to tighten it. We wanna keep this as loose as possible so that it's easier to work our next row. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to do another slip stitch row, but it's gonna start with an increase and it's gonna be into the back loops. So how we're going to do our increase is do a chain two. So there's one, that's gonna count as our first stitch. And then our second chain is going to count as our turning chain, not as a stitch. So from here, we're gonna flip our work and we're gonna start by inserting our hook into that second chain from our hook. So we're gonna skip one, insert into that next back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. And that's how we do our increase. From here, continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now when we reach the end of this row, we're going to do a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And once we get to the end of the row, I'll meet you guys back just to remind you guys how we're going to do our increase one more time. All right, so we are back and we should have one, two, three rows all finished up. We are on the increase side and I'm just going to increase with you guys just one more time. So just like before, we're going to do a chain two, flip our work, and then skipping that first chain and inserting your hook into the back loop of that second chain. Insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. And that's it. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And then from here, we're going to keep repeating these two rows until we have a portion that can stretch from mid underarm to the front of our body. And I'll meet you guys back along the increase side so that we can do our strap from there. 
I am back with my underarm portion and I have a total of 11 rows all finished up. And just let you guys know, this is just about two inches or five centimeters unstretched. Once we have this, we should all end it on the increased side. And now we're gonna make a chain that reaches all the way up to the middle of the back of our neck. And that's going to be our strap. So I've already measured mine out. I'm gonna start by making a chain of 35 and that's eight inches or 21 centimeters. And now I have the chain that reaches all the way up to the back of my neck. And now we're going to do some more slip stitches. So let's just get this started. Into that last chain, we're going to block it off and do a chain of one. That counts as our turning chain. And then into the second chain from the hook or the chain that we blocked off, we're going to insert with another slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do that again. Insert into that next chain, yarn over, pull through everything. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain, and then I will meet you guys back once we reach the body portion so that I can just show you guys that we're going to continue to do back loop slip stitches. I put one slip stitch into every chain, and now we're going to go back to doing back loop slip stitches into the body of our work. So if you guys need to, you may need to flip our work a little bit, and then just insert your hook into that first stitches back loop with a slip stitch, and then just maintain that, making the way all the way down. When we reach the end of this row, we're going to do a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch with no increases and no decreases. And we're gonna keep repeating this row until we get a shoulder strap the size that we like, making sure that we meet back along the bottom. I'll meet you guys back to have that all done. All right, I am back with my strap and I now have a total of 16 rows and my width is just about three inches or eight centimeters now unstretched. Now from here, we're gonna start working on our neckline and then we're gonna start with some decreases. So the first thing we're going to want to do is insert our stitch marker where we want our neckline to start. So from the bottom, I've inserted my stitch marker into the 26 stitch from the bottom and this is just about six inches or 15 centimeters. Once we have this, we're going to do our back loop slip stitches, make our way all the way up until we have just two stitches right before our stitch marker and I'll meet you guys back so we can do a decrease together. All right, we made our way all the way up and we have two stitches right before our stitch marker, so let's do our decrease. Insert your hook into that second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through, into that last back loop. We're gonna yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. That's how we do our decrease of two back loop slip stitches. Once we have that working our way down, we aren't gonna be doing any decreases. So simply chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now at the end of this row, go ahead and do a chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, leaving the last two once more, just so we can do our decrease together one more time. All right, so I've made my way down with my back loop slip stitch row, did a chain one, and made my way back up with my back loop slip stitch row, leaving the last two so that we can decrease again. So start by inserting your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through, also into that next back loop, Yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. That's how we do our decrease. Chain one, flip your work, and then make your way down with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from there, we're going to keep repeating those two rows until this reaches the middle of our chest, making sure that we meet back along the top. All right, so I'm back with the first half of my front panel. I have a total of 31 rows, and my width is now five inches or 13 centimeters unstretched. Since we all should have ended along the top, now we're going to do the same thing that we did here, but in reverse. So since we are right here, we're gonna get started on the increased side of our neckline. So just like how we increased on the other side, we're going to do a chain two, flip our work. From here, we're going to slip stitch into that second chain from our hooks, back loop, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Put one back loop slip stitch to every stitch. When we reach that bottom of our work, do a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. I'll meet you guys back at the end of that row just so we can increase with each other one more time. All right, so now that we are at the top of our work, we're gonna do one more increase together. So just like before, do a chain two, flip our work, and insert your hook into that second chain's back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, we're just gonna keep repeating these two rows until we have the same amount of rows as this half of our neckline. And then I'll meet you guys back. 
right? So I am back with my increase side. Now from here, we're going to make a chain, the same amount of stitches that we skipped over here for the strap portion. So if you guys have my numbers, I skipped a total of 33 stitches. So over here, we're going to make a chain of 33. All right, so now that I have my chain, we're now going to do the same strap portion that we have over here. So just to start that off, block off our last chain, do a chain of one into that chain that we blocked off, insert with your first slip stitch, and then continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. When we reach the body portion, put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, do a chain one, flip your work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Maintain that row with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as our strap over here. Then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the underarm portion together. All right, so I'm back with my shoulder portion, and now we are ready to get started on our underarm portion to finish up the front panel. So the first thing we're going to have to do is insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made for our strap. So if you guys have my numbers, I ended up making a chain of 35. So from here along the top, I counted down 35 and inserted my stitch marker. From here, we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until we are just two stitches right before a stitch marker so that we can decrease with each other one more time. All right, so we have two stitches right before a stitch marker, so let's do our decrease together. Insert your hook into that second to last back loop, pull through into that last back loop. We're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And that is our decrease. From here, when we're working our way down, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and just put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. No increases and no decreases. And for the next row, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, decreasing into the last two stitches. And we're going to keep repeating those two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows as we have when we started this piece off. Go ahead and do a chain up one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. I have just finished up the entirety of my front panel, and I did do a chain up a one and cut. I have a total of four and a half inches or 24 centimeters, and now I can get started on the back. So the first thing we're going to do is start by making a chain. That is the same amount of chains that we made when we started our underarm portion. So if you guys have my numbers, I made a chain of 18. So I'm going to make another chain of 18. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain of one. That extra chain doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. And then from here, all we're going to do is put one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to do a row of back loop slip stitches. So from here, do a chain one, flip your work. And just like for our front panel, we're going to be inserting our hook into that first back loop, yarn over, pull through everything, next back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we reach the end, do a chain one, and then do another row of back loop slip stitches. We're going to keep repeating this row until this can stretch across our back from underarm to underarm, with no increases and no decreases, and then I'll reach you guys back so we can seam them together. All right, I am back with my back panel. I have a total of 50 rows, and this is roughly eight inches or 20 centimeters unstretched. And what we're going to do from here, our seam, our two sides together. So we're gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and back panel. Once we have this, we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam. So start by yarning over, pulling through everything just to secure the two panels together. From here, into that first available stitch into the front panel, we're going to insert our hook into that front loop only, or the loop that's closest to us, and then into the back panel, I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop, and we should have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through all three, so that this seam looks like a slip stitch row. So let's do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook only into that front loop. And then into the next stitch, into the back panel, only insert your hook into that back loop. Yarn over, pull through everything. Let's do this one more time. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert into that front loop. And the next stitch into the back panel, insert into the back loop. Yarn over, and pull through everything. We're going to continue to do that, making our way all the way down, and we don't have any more stitches left 
do a chain up a one and cut and then do the same thing that we did here on the other side. All right, now that our slides are all seamed up, we are now ready to seam our strap. So what we're going to do is make sure that the strap is going to be flipped inside out so that once we flip it over, the seam will be along the inside. Once we have that, we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitches. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through everything, and then do a chain up a one to secure. Now, once we have that, we're gonna be putting one seam crochet into every side slip stitch row. So let's get that started. This is my first side slip stitch row right here. It's going to be this divot. I'm gonna find that top loop and insert my hook. And then into the back panel, I'm gonna find that same top loop and insert my hook into there with one single crochet. Let's do that again. Into my next side slip stitch row, which is this raised row, I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook, and I'm going to find that same top loop into the back panel, insert, and then single crochet. I'm gonna keep doing this so I don't have any more stitches left, do a chain up one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, we have just finished up seaming our straps, and now we're going to start working on the bottom. So the first thing we're gonna do is insert our hook into any one of our side rows. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, I'm gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row that we have. So the first side row that I have is this divot right here. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with one single crochet. My next side row is this raised side slip stitch row. So insert with one single crochet, and let's do that again. This is my next side slip stitch row. Find that top loop, single crochet, and then this is my next side row. Find that top loop or this raised row. Insert your hook, and then single. We're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain one space, and then we'll meet you guys back. All right, we have just finished up some crocheting along the bottom of our piece, and now we're going to make a chain the length that we want this piece to be. Now, I want nine to be about nine inches or 23 centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of 35. And now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and start with a chain of four. Now, this chain of four doesn't count as a stitch. This is going to be our turning chain for our treble crochet. So now that we have our chain one, two, three, four, we're going to prepare for a treble crochet, which is a yarn over of one and then two. Now insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off or the fifth chain from our hook. We're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and then to finish up our treble crochet, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. That is our first treble crochet, let's do that again. Yarn over twice, insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, and pull through. You're going to yarn over and pull through two until you have just one loop left on your hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Let's do it one more time. Yarn over twice, insert your hook into that next chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down, and I'll meet you guys back at the base. And now that I've made my way all the way down, I now need to connect it into the base. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out and right side up, and we're all gonna be working towards the left or clockwise. And what we're going to do from here is slip stitch it into the base. So we're first gonna have to count out a total of four stitches. So here's one, Here's two, three, and four. Into that fourth stitch, we're going to insert with a slip stitch to close up this treble crochet row. And then just to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch up just one stitch because our next row is going to be back loop slip stitches. So from there, we're gonna flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. I'll meet you guys back at the end of this row. Right now that we have made our way down with our back loop slip stitch row, we're just going to get started with our next row, which is going to be another treble crochet row. But from here on out, it's going to be into the back loops. 
So start by doing a chain up of four. Flip our work. And just to do the first back loop treble crochet with you guys, yarn over twice. Insert your hook into that first stitches back loop. Pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. And we're going to continue to do that, making our way all the way down, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And then do our back loop slip stitch row and then repeat. I'll meet you guys back. We don't have any more stitches left so we can seam it all together. All right, so I have made my way all the way around with my back loop treble crochet and back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left, so now what we're going to do is seam it all together. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is slipped right side out, meaning the ribbing that we have for the bottom portion is faced out. And from here, we're going to start by doing our outside loop slip stitch seam, so the same seam that we did for the sides of our top portion. Start by inserting your hook into that first stitches, front loop into the front panel and then into the back panel's first stitch, into the back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert into that front loop, and then into the next stitch, into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down, but we don't have any more stitches left, so a chain up of one and cut. All right, we have just finished up seaming the bottom and we're now going to work on our back detail. And the first thing that we're going to have to do is do a single crochet row to clean it up. So I'm going to start by inserting my hook into any one of our side rows. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And all I'm going to do from here is put one single crochet into every side slip stitch row. And then put one single crochet into every stitch, making our way up and down the strap. Slip stitch into this chain one space, and then I will meet you guys back. So let's just do the first one together. We're going to need to find our first side slip stitch row minus this divot right here. I'm going to insert my hook with one single crochet. This is my next side slip stitch row. I'm going to have to find that top loop. Insert my hook with another single crochet. Keep doing this, making our way all the way around, and I'll meet you guys back once we're in the single crochet rows all finished. All right, now that my single crochet row is all done, we're now going to do a half double crochet row. So after our slip stitch, what we're going to do is do a chain two. So there's one, there's two. That doesn't count as a stitch, that's just a turning chain, and we want the height. And we're just going to make our way all the way around, putting one half double crochet into every stitch. So start with a yarn over. Insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. Let's do this again. Yarn over into that next stitch, pull through, shut out three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three. And from here, we're going to continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch, slip stitch into the second chain that we made when we started off this row, then I'll meet you guys back. All right, our half double crochet is all finished up, and now we're going to do front and back post double crochets, making our way all the way around just for a little bit more detail and texture. So what we're going to do from here is start with a chain two. All right, so we're going to start with our front post double crochet. So we're going to yarn over, and then into the first half double crochet from our previous row, we're going to insert our hook underneath the body of that half double crochet. So bring your hook underneath and then through the other side. Then from here, we're going to yarn over, pull through, and then double crochet per usual. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do the next one. We're going to yarn over, and the next one is going to be a back post double crochet. So we're going to bring our hook underneath our work, and then bring it over the body of our next half double crochet. So over, and through the other side. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now we should all have a front post and back post double crochet. Let's do just one more set. Start with the yarn over, insert your hook underneath that half double crochet, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now let's do our back post. Yarn over, bring our hook underneath our work and over the next half double, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, 
both are two. So what we should have right now is one front post, one back post, one front post, one back post double crochet. And we're going to keep alternating, making our way all the way around. And we don't have any more stitches left. We're going to slip stitch into that second chain that we made, do a chain up one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I've just finished up my front and back post double crochet row, and now we're actually going to do the same thing on the inside of our next scoop. So I'm going to start by inserting my hook into any one of my stitches. I'm just inserting mine into my stitch that's nearest to my seam, and I'm going to repeat. So a single crochet row, a half double crochet row, and then a front post and back post double crochet row. I'll meet you guys back once we have this portion all finished up. Alright, so we are back and we are all done. Last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it guys, we are all done. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial and don't forget to check us out on Pinterest, Instagram, or Twitter. All those links are down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye!